Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm up here today at the shooting range at the James D. Julia Auction House in Maine. And we just did a video yesterday on the ZB26 and its history and its mechanics. And when I filmed that, I didn't realize I was actually going to have the chance to do some live fire shooting with the gun. So, embarrassingly, I've never actually shot a ZB26 before and I think it's high time that I fix that. So we're out here, got a couple mags, got some ammo, and we're going to do some shooting with this. Alrighty, this guy fires from a top-mounted magazine. The magazine's in the top of the, well, the center of the barrel axis, so the sights are offset to the left. Um, however, it's actually not that big of a deal for a left-hander like me to roll my face over the left side of the gun and get a good sight picture anyway. It does fire from an open bolt, so I'm going to lock that open first, then load my magazine. There we go. We have both semi and full auto capability here on the selector switch, so we'll start with a couple rounds of semi-auto. That's cool, but that's really not what a gun like the ZB26 is meant for. Let's rock and roll it. All right, I think a lot of people, machine gun aficionados are familiar with the ZB26, but I think a lot of other people probably aren't. This is a, a highly overlooked gun, which is too bad, because this is a fantastic machine gun. Um, for collectors, for shooters, this, this thing has something for just about everybody. And the reason is, it's an extremely, as I talked about yesterday, it's an extremely robust, simple, it's a mechanically excellent gun. And that translates into, it's a fantastic shooting gun. Uh, it's got a fairly high rate of fire, but it's still quite controllable. The magazines are easily available. They're not that expensive, and they're really good, high-quality magazines. Uh, it's a light machine gun using box mags, which means you don't have to mess with belts or belt loaders as a shooter. It's an 8mm Mauser, so the ammunition is easy to get. The surplus is a little more expensive than it used to be, but you'll never have any trouble getting 8mm Mauser. And... Just everything, I mean, this gun was nice enough that the British adopted it effectively and turned it into the Bren gun. The only real advantage that the Bren has over this is the Bren has an adjustable gas regulator. So if you're going to be shooting a wide variety of different sorts of ammo, okay, that helps. But the ZB26 is a little lighter, a little slimmer, and as you can see here, it just runs great. One of the other cool things about the ZB26 is that it exists in like every nationality. So these were made by the Czechs, so they're extremely high quality guns out of the factory. They were used by a bunch of different small militaries, something like two dozen different countries bought these. And then if you're into German World War II, there are examples like this one that were basically captured halfway built at the Brno factory when the Germans occupied. This one, of course, is a, uh, was a Spanish contract gun. And the Germans basically said, yeah, we're going to be keeping all of those. We don't care who already paid for them. And so these ended up seeing service with a lot of German units. Um, in fact, not really so much the Wehrmacht, but the SS, and then a lot of the non-army security type units, railway guards, factory guards. If those kind of people needed machine guns, the ZB26 is one of the main guns that they were able to get their hands on because they were able to have them manufactured at Brno.
Well, like I said, I, this is the first time I've actually been able to get out and shoot a ZB-26, and I'll be entirely honest, it totally lived up to my expectations. Um, I've read a bunch about how nice these guns are to shoot. I've shot a Bren gun, which is basically a product-improved ZB-26, and I'll tell you what, everything they said is true. It's controllable, it's handy, it's easy to shoot, it's reliable. We didn't have a single issue with it through this whole filming session. This is a fantastic little gun. Unfortunately, it's not a gun I'm going to be taking home because it's coming up for sale here at Julia. So if you'd like to have it yourself, take a look at the description text below the video. You'll find a link there to Julia's catalog page on it. You can see their pictures and their description, and you can place a bid uh, live here at the auction or over the phone or over their website. Thanks for watching, guys.